to die or not to die? That is the question. <laughs> How's it going, my people? This is your boy Wired Up, and welcome to another episode of To Die or Not to Die. That is the question. Brought to you by the Wired Up TV family. And I hope you guys have, are having a great day and are handling everything you guys need to handle. Keep your hand on that motherfucking on that motherfucking gun and be ready to pull that trigger anytime. With that being said, let's get down to it, my people. This episode tonight is about Mr. Easy E, the king of gangster rap. Did he die or did he not die? That is the question. And that's not my question. You guys know as well as I know, this is a question people have been asking for years since the king of gangster rap himself, the godfather, Easy e passed away. Now, everybody knows his credentials. Started as NWA with Boys in the Hood, and they blew up. Dre, Yella, and um, what the fuck's that dude's name? Uh, Buck, man. Dre, I know it's Dre, Yella, Easy, uh, Doc, the DOC, and then MC Ren. That was NWA, guys. They blew the fuck up and did wonderful things. Now, not long after they started doing wonderful things, did people started going after them like politicians and the FBI even sent them a paper saying to take that song off, fuck the police off and things of that nature. So, you know, they started getting attacked and things like that. You know, with that being said, Jerry Heller comes in the picture. He's a white Jewish gentleman, and he basically gets real, con, you know, kin with easy. And he essentially takes over as best friend, and they both push everybody aside, right? That's the way the group saw it. So first it was DLC, you know, got hooked up with Suge, then came Dre, and then little by little they started losing people. Now, when everybody leaving... Everybody knows what happened. Suge Knight took basically all of them and helped them start Death Row Records with the help of Harry O and Mr. David Kenner, right, as the um, as the lawyer, you know, playing the lawyer, basically playing the lawyer. So, <clears throat> you know, with that being said, uh, you know, we know what they were actually doing, okay? Um after everybody left, you know, Easy e basically went on himself and, you know, he hired a lot of great rappers like uh, BG Knockout and all these, you know, great people, Bone Thugs and Harmony. You know, he was planning to sign Snoop before he went to Death Row and went with Dre. He was planning to sign Tupac before every all that stuff happened with him over there on the East Coast and before he came to Death Row Records in L.A. But anyways, all that was going on. And the theory goes that with the threats of Suge Knight going to the White House, he was getting threats. You know, people calling him the N-word. Um, people telling him, you know, if you get close to us and do this and do that, we're going to have problems. You know what I'm saying? Getting a whole bunch of threats, you know what I'm saying? People knowing who the hell he was. So, and, you know, especially people knowing where he lived. Everybody knew where he lived, okay? People believe that there was an attempt on his life. And he decided to act fast. By acting fast, he basically planned his escape. Okay? He knew... That he would not be able to just leave or try to live a, a normal life and try to back away because this is the king of rap. This is the, the godfather of gangster rap. You know, he's not going to go into hiding. Plus, he has all these artists, you know, so you can see BG Knockout uh, from Nutty Block Crip. He had real gangsters with him that were backing him up. He had real connections. To people, to the underworld, to all kinds of things that you guys wouldn't imagine. Money can buy you a lot of shit. And one thing is freedom. 
As long as the feds don't catch you and your face is posted all over the motherfucking place, you straight. You know, you have to think smart. And Easy e with the help of Jerry Heller and the Jewish League, uh, the Jewish Defense League or whatever the fuck, uh, Jerry Heller, excuse my language, but whatever the hell he was uh, connected with, you know, got the proper connections. We all know that a lot of Jewish people run television, run the media. A lot of Jewish people like the Ross, uh, like the Ross, uh, what, what do you call the Ross streams, the Ross things, um, and, uh, rich families of that nature owned everything in this country. Right now, I, I'm not, I'm not going to go out on a limb and say it went that deep, but this is what people are talking about. You know what I'm saying? They're not saying it went that deep, but. Basically, I'm just explaining who Jerry Heller was connected to or who he talked to. He might not have been completely connected, but money talks, bullshit walks, okay? So, you know, he knew that Shook was after him. The cops were after him. You know what I'm saying? There were some uh, females that were, you know, constantly threatening him, you know, uh, threatening him that they were going to do this, that they were going to do that, that they were going to blame this on him and that on him. So he had a lot of issues, man, you know, and like I mentioned earlier, uh, when he went to the White House, <clears throat> excuse me, when uh, when Easy went to the White House, that was a nail in the coffin as well for a lot of these white supremacists. Um, everybody knows that Easy E got threats from um, certain organizations in California that are connected to prison gangs and white supremacy gangs. And this comes from his family themselves, okay? From Little Easy said this. Easy E used to get a lot of threats from skinheads and things of that nature, uh, even from his own people, because he hung around with a Jewish man. But Easy E was smart. He was not trying to go backwards. He was trying to go forward. He was trying to come up. He was trying to make money. He wasn't trying to stay uh, back and not advance. He didn't want no part... He wanted to bring the ghetto out the fucking ghetto and bring them into this and like good stuff and get some money. He didn't want them to stay in one spot. But at this time, the government was cracking hard on gangster rap, on EZ, on Tupac, on NWA, on Dre, on Death Row, and Snoop. I mean, they were cracking on them. Okay. EZ used to do a lot of charity work at hospitals. Okay. He knew people that worked in the AIDS floor. He knew people that worked in cancer centers. He knew all this stuff. Okay. With the little money, people think he paid himself into faking his death. And he was going to use this to teach the kids about HIV. He picked the way he was going to die. Also, Tupac did the same thing. You hear it all over his music when he says, a real man picked the time he go. That's on Me Against the World. Uh, on uh, I See Death Around the Corner. A real motherfucker picked the time he goes. Okay? And how you go. Easy, he picked it. He, he chose that opportunity to teach kids about AIDS. And that's how he left. Now, on the other flip side, you know, because we all know, we, we just heard the conspiracies and the stories and could be the truth. <laughs> it could be the truth of what happened to Easy. But other people think that he actually did die and he's dead. But they don't think that he died of HIV. No, 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 no. BG Knockout has came out. Not only BG Knockout, Frost. And many other rappers, people in Bone Thugs and Harmony, watch the interviews, my people. They're all over YouTube when they think he was murdered. Some people think he was murdered in connection to Jerry Heller and in connection to Suge Knight. So a lot of people think this man was murdered, okay? You heard Suge Knight say on the Jimmy Kimmel show that he's going to, you know, that... that People don't shoot anybody yet. With all these forensics, it's too much trouble. He said, you know how we do it now? We get a needle and we get the blood from somebody with HIV and we shoot somebody with it. And that's a slow, miserable death. 
the Easy E thing. Okay, he said this himself. Also, one of the sole benefit, uh, the the sole benefiter, the w one of the person that that benefited the most. Oh, actually, two of the people that benefited the most out of Easy E's death. Who is it, guys? It was Suge Knight, and it was Jerry Heller, and also his wife. You guys got to remember, he married this girl literally minutes before he passed away or hours before they before Easy passed away. Bijinaka said it. That he doesn't even think that that signature is real. They think he passed away, and as soon as he passed away, they signed it. Or they made him sign it under duress. He didn't know what it was. He didn't think it was a marriage license. He didn't know what it was. But they think Heller and Suge, and maybe with the help of the wife, helped murder Easy e and inject him with something. Now, it might not have been AIDS, but then again, it might have. I mean, you heard Shook Knight. You know, it says on his death certificate, people that have seen it, BG Naka said he's seen his death certificate. It's on Vlad TV. Go watch the interview. I believe it's his first one because he has two. So go watch it. And y'all see exactly what I'm talking about. Okay? This is what we got to go by. Okay, people think that he was murdered and that it had something to do with business and money. Jerry Heller, Snoop, maybe his wife, something's going on there. And it's interesting to talk about that. It makes sense because of how quickly he passed away of AIDS. Now, people, I'm not just talking. I've done my research. I spoke to a uh, an actual physician that does numerous tests on HIV. And I've also spoken to a AIDS patient herself. Okay. That by the way, has a YouTube channel and they've never heard of somebody passing away that quick of HIV AIDS. It takes time. Any disease takes time to take over the body and slowly deteriorate and kill you. You know, fuck your organs up. Whatever the case may be. Okay? Now, they have heard of situations of people with AIDS that have died quickly. And by coincidence, had just caught HIV, which was pneumonia. Which, um, I believe it was cardiac arrest that was Easy es uh, cause of death. Anyways, guys. It's up to you. To, you know, to live or to die. Is he alive or is he dead? It's up to y'all to figure that shit out, man. But these are two theories. I want to know what you guys think. And I want to know your guys' opinion. If y'all got any more information, please send it up. Please send it to wiredubtb 4 you at gmail.com. And like always, guys, stay wired up. Peace out. Hope you enjoyed, guys. Thank you for watching another episode of To Die or Not To Die. That is the question. Ha 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 